Hello, I'm Runia, aka Media Adaptation, and welcome back to a moderation while meets for a game. And we're mostly back up and running after our move. It'll probably still be a bit echoey, but it seems to be fine. Although it is still glitching a bit. You're the one who's being a bit bitchy. That's not what I. Ugh. Oh, never mind. Anyway, it's time once again to talk about this mostly lost A style anime, Go for a Punch, aka Saki Senabashi, where we cover any new developments on the Discord and Reddit channels and then cover some older anime and manga. And our top story is still the dark anime sites. Oh, and I was asked to clear up that it was a member who made the fake title, not the source. Though the real one was actually found. And to be fair, the fake one seemed to have more time spent on it. We were also given screenshots of the original emails between them and the source. And again, it helps to eliminate them as a troll. And I also believe that two other members are doing some follow-ups on them, trying to verify their claims. And also, there's now apparently another website supposedly tied to Dark Anime. Again, it is a very common name, so as of yet, it's not 100% sure that it's the same guy. But the odds are pretty high. Also, this one dates back to 2001. Also, the original publisher of Lady of the Sea of Blood did do anime, of which I can only legally show you one part of it because of YouTube. And given that we covered Sailor and the Seven Balls a while back, it's interesting to see that there are still parodies out there that I've never seen before. Oh, and last week, we showed the Japanese Saki music video, and people wanted me to clarify why I wanted them to ask about their inspiration if it was so clearly apparent. Well, when we first started the search, about a year ago, we asked some Japanese message boards about Saki, and no one there knew that the search was as big as it was. So, for a group from Japan to just suddenly base a music video about it, it really makes me question that what it's based on is something other than the story itself. Oh, and the user Litkiss actually found an interesting explanation to why the original Go For A Punch video was taken down, if it was something that used to be accessible by normal means. The full video of it is up on Reddit, but to briefly summarize it, in 2005, the United States Department of Justice created the organization called the Obscenity Prosecution Task Force, formed during the presidency of George Bush, to investigate pornograph that they deemed inappropriate to society, and several videos got taken down, and the owners got fined or threatened with jail time. One of these people that were targeted was the creator of the infamous video Two Girls One Cup, so that could help explain why it just suddenly vanished. And given how anime from that time period is still not completely cataloged, one can see why an obscure title would fall through the cracks. But again, if that means we look at one Reddit, then we have to look at the main one. And it's about 50-50 this week. Someone posed a question if Saki could be based on the Die Fantasy video way back in 2011. Which actually is pretty interesting to watch. But it was made with a newer art style, so it is highly unlikely. But it's still something worth checking out. Oh, and it was also brought to my attention that there is a way to fake um, images on the Wayback Machine. Thus providing another possible explanation to what happened along those lines. And that finally brings us to this week's fan art. Team Saki did put out some character sheets, it looks like they got two of them finalized at last, or at least in the final stages of being. And then there are two other fan arts, one for the Reddit and the other for the Discord. And again, I'll try to put out the correct names of these people, or at least the people who posted them. And for some reason, this one makes me laugh, so Tina one says I'll probably use that one as the thumbnail. And as for anime this week, it's called... There is no way I could probably say that. So, uh, it's normally translated to The Restaurant of Many Orders, or Many Rooms, from 1991, based on an older story of the same name. Two hunters, normally referred to as British, even though they clearly look Japanese, go to the woods. Their dogs pick up a scent, so they remove their leashes and they run off, shortly followed by cries of pain. And when they reach them, both dogs are dead. The wind picks up and a storm blows in and the pair find themselves at a restaurant in the middle of the woods. The two go in and ring the bell, but no one comes. And this is where the anime shines, 
as there is no dialogue, as well as moments of no music, which really helps to build up the tension and dread, as well as the mystery, as you have to rely more on their facial expressions to tell the story. The only words in this are the messages that are written on the wall that ask them to look presentable before they continue. This repeats for a while, as the two find themselves in stranger and stranger rooms, one of them being a hall full of mirrors with doors that shatter into butterflies, and another that's just a drop off. And finally our two come to a room where they finally see another living person, who pours them a drink as the table is set for three. On edge, they refrain from drinking as a group of dancers arrive, but after a while the true motives are revealed as their eyes flash yellow, and they turn into cats the size of wolves. Even their waiter is one as well. But then it cuts to black as the two of them find themselves in the woods, as they soon find another traveler to give them a ride, and it becomes clear that they wanted them to leave, and tell the others to stay clear of the woods. The strange thing is, is that they actually made another version of this a few years later, in 1993, and this story is far more kid-friendly as the dogs are simply knocked out. And there's dialogue. Lots and lots of dialogue. The story plays out in the same, but they have more fun with the concept. I can't respect what it's trying to do, even though the first one is still far superior. Here, they run with the original concept of the notes, each telling them to do a different thing, like please leave your weapons, then take off your hat and coat, and boots, and then your valuables in a safe, and so on and so on and it actually takes them a while to catch on to what's going on, as the hall they're in never changes, and the cats have trapped them into a place, slowly willing them down to nothing more than the size of mice. But because it's the kids' version, the dogs wake up and save the day. The building then disappears, finding themselves in the woods, and they meet back with their guide, who also turns out to be one of them, who set up the entire event to help protect his home. It turns out that there's also an even older version made in 1953, being a mix of puppetry and stop motion, and it kind of hits the middle ground between the other two versions. Each short only lasts about 20 minutes or so, and it is a very interesting experience. I also found a very interesting YouTube video comparing all three versions of it. It doesn't go into spoiler territory, but it does talk about the themes of each of the movies. So again, I'll try and leave the link to that as well. And as for our adult animation this week, we have Guy Double Target from 1988. And I would say definitely track down the English dub of this one, just on the solo fact that our main character, the titularly named Guy, is voiced by the same person who does the cat from Ghost Stories. So that's always a plus, and his gratuitous use of the F word. Like many of other stories, this one's also based on something else. And it's a loose adaptation of Aliens. Our two-man team finds a floating ship and goes to investigate, and find hellish abominations. But one of them briefly regains his humanity and tells them of a prison planet, which deals in slave trade, drug dealing, and good old prostitution. So the pair sneak in, and they learn that his flame is also there. So they set up a prison break. The monsters are based on a bacterial infection there, which they set off a chain reaction and we get some good old early anime style monster violence. But then we hardline it right into Devil Man, which isn't bad as it's actually still pretty interesting. And they do pull a plot twist that our main bad guy rips our love interest's head clean off, who said the good guys always get the girl. So yeah, this one's pretty much just Devil Man in space, plus of course boobs. They did put out two more of these later down the line, but they'll have to wait for another time. And now for wrap up our video, let's continue our look at the next chapter of Shenmue's A Classroom Bereft of Angels. In our last part, they had a wholesale slaughter, and we're left with only three of them. So, let's take a look at chapter 8, as our vice walks over to our last two, asking if they're able to go on their own. Miss Amani will be watching, and that she'll join them after they're done. Gray hesitates while Black looks at the photo, and cocks a smile and ask if she's stupid. You must be crazy or something to think that you'll ever be able to reach her. She stares blankly. Do you not intend on dying? Gray confused as the two continue, hearing Black reply with, Of course not. There is no benefit in doing something stupid like that. Vice again pulls out the blade, 
and buries it into the table. You can't run away. Everyone has to die. Everyone. Black ignores her, and Gray points to herself, asking that that also applies to her, too. Vice takes a swing at her, to which she catches. She pulls back as Black lets her go, then strikes again, as she grabs something from the desk, blocking the attack with a book, and then raising it up and then smashing it over her head. She falls backwards, dropping the photo, as more books are thrown at her. Gray tries to break up the fight, but they just ignore her, as she says there's no point in trying to be like her. It's impossible. Go chase her on your own, as she seemed to have hated you anyway. Vice is taken aback by this, and the two begin to argue, as Gray looks over at the photo and notices something that glints. Vice goes on about how she relied on her. She praised her for her work. Yes, she needed Aname, but I'm sure that she thought very highly of her. To which, Black just smiles, sits up, and then whispers something in her ear. She's immediately repulsed by it. That can't be right. Then why'd she say all that to her? She's waiting, and I'm going to confirm it with my own eyes. She sits back on the window seal, smiles, and prays for her guidance once more, before falling out. Happily content, she looks up, and sees Black smile at her, to which she glares. But the feeling is short-lived, as it's quickly replaced by shock and confusion, as there appears to be another figure waiting on the floor above. After the two are done, Black shrugs, saying that it really did end. All the weird ones are dead. Indeed, it was a rare and exciting experience, but it's finally the end. Well, not quite, as Black picks up the frame and looks at it closely and smiling as a figure walks down the hall, then opens the door, which then takes us to chapter 9, with only two left to go. Didn't call that ending. I did think she set up everything from the start, but I thought someone would have at least asked to see the body, especially when you have so many stalkers. And what's with Black's backstory? But I guess I'll have to wait for next time. And that about does it for this video. If you have any other ideas like seeing made to a video, then please post it down in the comments below, and we'll add it to our next viewer request week. It's now time for the part of the show, where we ask you to help us appease the YouTube algorithm by dropping a like, share, or comment. It helps out much more than you'd think. And if you haven't subscribed yet, then it's very much appreciated. And if you'd like to support this channel, then please visit our Patreon. Link will be down in the description below. Even if you can't give a lot, every little bit helps. Oh, we also started up a Let's Play channel. So, if you want to see us try out some horror games, then feel free to stop on by. Link will be in the card as well as in the description. And I guess I'll see you in the next one. Anyway, I'm Runya. And I'm Ada. Remind you to take life in moderation. Weep not for children, for life is this way. Murdering beauty and passion. Hush now, dear children, it must be this way. Children